I guess I hit a button by accident. How is everyone doing? That triggered something on my... Hey guys. Hello. Non-EU friendly stream. I mean, yeah. I went to go flick a piece of dust off of my keycap and look what happened. Uh, hello everybody. Hope you and everyone else is having a great day. I'm having a slow burn of a day, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel very exhausted today. Thank you, Sneak. I appreciate the 11 months of being here and the support, bro. How are you doing today? Hopefully your day is good, though. So, Miso, thank you so much to the Prime for four months. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, this week has been a slow burner. Awful, but tomorrow's another day. Oak, I hope I hope uh, tomorrow gets better, man. Yeah, today's, today's just been a weird day, man. It's been, like I said, like a slow burn. Like, I feel like I've just been at it, like chipping away. Nothing's moving, you know? Nev. Thank you, thank you. Hey Alex, hope you're doing well today. Dude, thank you Got so your much. workout in today? That always no. helps my mood. I mean, I did errands today, and I, I walked around. I got a funny story for you guys. Um, but, yeah, nothing too crazy. Just like a normal so nice. normal day. I, I just been in front of the computer, basically. Hubert, thank you so much for the tier one. Nev, thank you again for 10 months. Hubert, for 14, that's crazy, man. And Wisp, thank you so much for eight months, dude. I'm having a dreading tomorrow day, being uh, oh loaned out to a different area of work. Excited to see funny. how this derivative turns out. Been loving mine since I got it. Wait, derivative? Am I doing a derivative today? Oh, I'm doing the albatross. Yeah, I'm doing the albatross today. I think I did the derivative the other day, but I will be doing another derivative tomorrow, or uh, next week rather. So, your Discord? Did I put derivative stream? Why does it say there's a derivative stream? Oh, that's really weird. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why it says that for. Uh, derivative R1 build. Uh, beats me. That's not the title. No takes backs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it says that for. Speaking of derivatives, I just aced my Calc 1 midterm in the... Uh, oh, it takes the old title sometimes? Oh. In the halftime, rewarded myself with ordering, oh, from Vala Supply. I hope it comes in, man. I hope it comes in quick, and I hope you like it, dude. It's a, it's a nice set. I got mine from Vala as well. So nice. KG, thank you so much for the Prime, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, dude. Uh, is that the Moon Tower? It is. It is indeed. I felt like using something different today. So I decided the Moon Tower was a good choice. Also, I really need to shave. I just realized that my beard's getting kind of... Yeah, I was like, you know what? I, I feel like it's a moon tower kind of day. Although, the spring weight for these switches are incredibly heavy, and I do want to swap them out, I think. I think, uh, I think I kind of growing a little tired of these switches. I think this is when I was trying 72s out, and uh, my fingies, my fingies are too, too weak. Yeah, I'll probably rebuild it. I think I've rebuilt this thing like four or five times. Um, all right, I got a, a few of you guys are in here, I think. It's been a little while, it's been, how long? Where's my timer thing, four minutes? Not a long time, but I'll tell you guys a funny story. So, this happened the other day. Basically, uh, to sum up the beginning of the story, um, <laughs> the reason I'm doing this as a two-parter is because something happened today so just bear with me, okay? About, I'd say a week and a bit ago, I went to the post office, but it wasn't the normal one that I go to. I had to run to a different one, which is two, three minutes away from the one that I'm at because for whatever reason, the package got redirected to that one there. So I ran there and I get there and I actually set up this scene to tell you guys this story again. I, I fixed this scene just to tell you guys. <laughs> I get there, right? And... There's a guy in line in front of, like two people in front of me basically. And I'm in front, I'm behind, I, uh, he's behind um, someone else and it's his turn now. He gets in line and he's like, hi. He's like, I'd like to set up, <laughs> thank you KG. He's like, I'd like to set up a, uh, he's like, which one's my buttons here? He's like, I'd like to set up uh, two things. He's like, one, I really want to set up a PO box and two, I want to do a money transfer. And if you guys don't already know, money transfers, the worst thing to do a post office. I actually hate when people do money transfers because for whatever reason, 
They never have any of the information ready and they take 15 years. Um, so they set up the P.O. Box first and he, they set up the P.O. Box and he's like, all right, so P.O. Box is set up. Let's do the money transfer. Lady's like, okay, let's do the money transfer, but let's pay for the P.O. Box first. He's like, I have to pay for a P.O. Box? And he's like, next thing you're going to tell me that you're going to charge me to do the money transfer. And I'm just like, in the back, I'm like, God damn, man, we've already been here for 15 minutes. And he then throws a fit. He throws an absolute fit. He's like, I can't believe I have to pay for this service. He's like, this is ridiculous. You guys are the post office. And I'm just sitting in the back just like, my God, all I need to do is pick up a fucking package. And then he goes, so he's after he says like, can't believe I have to do this as a, you know, this is a post office. The lady in front of me <laughs> hits him with the, sir, in your line of work, do you just do things for free? Like, do, do you not? And then I don't know why he said this so smug. He's like, I don't work. It shows, buddy. And then, and then he's like, I'm gonna go find another post office that does this for free. And he left. All right, then he left. And then the, the reason I'm telling you guys this story is today, sad, sad music off. Today, he comes into the, my post office, the one I normally go. He's in line and I recognize him because he had like a, a hat that was like very particular. And I'm like, no way this guy's here, bro. It's been like a week. And he looks like just annoyed. And he goes to the, restarting it. He goes up to the post office worker and goes, and my post office, by the way, they're saints there, bro. They're amazing. He goes up, he goes, hey, I'm having a hell of a time with this, but I'm trying to find a PO box and someone that's not gonna charge me. And I'm like, oh my God, bro, what the fuck's this guy on? And then the lady there is just like, Sorry, we can't help you with that. Like we we charge for a PO boxes. We're not affiliated with like Canada Post and He then like throws his arms up in the air He's like fine Let's just Figure out how much this is gonna cost me uh, She's like yeah, it's like sixty dollars for six months and a hundred bucks for a year and he's like a hundred dollars To what hold my mail? And he's like, I could do that myself, thank you. So then I chime in, bro. I had to hit him with this, bro. I had to hit him with the, I had to hit him with the, so why don't you, bro? I looked at him, I'm like, man, I remember you from the other post office, why don't you? Just collect the mail yourself. He looked at me, he shook his head, and then he left. Bro, like, what's wrong with people, man? But he could have just paid for it and worked. I think all, dude, all the walking around he did, all the, I mean, he did say he doesn't work. He, he doesn't. He, he kind of looked, he was like, you can tell he was well off. Well, at least his appearance was very well off. And I don't know if he just like has money and doesn't understand how the world works, but Anyways, that's probably the only story time you're probably going to get in a long time here because I don't remember the last time there was a good postal story office or whatever, you know, postal office story, whatever I fucking I just said. So I don't, I don't usually don't get them. So this is this is a, a rare opportunity to tell you guys the camera quality gets me going sensible. God damn, dude. Um, are you sure he has the money and not just one of those guys on Social Security? I, I don't know. Honestly, Nev, I'm not sure. But man, it was, it was wild. The, I think the second time wasn't as like shocking to me, but the first time when he was like throwing the fit and being like, I can't believe I have to pay for this. It's like, man, it's like any service in the world you have to pay for. <laughs> and then another side thing gotta tell you guys, I got an email today about someone um, not happy with one of my videos. And I love telling you guys these stories because it really just shows me like, I guess some sort of privilege in the world. Well, I have no idea what this is, but it's always interesting to look at different perspectives. Um, someone messaged me and they hit me with the, hey Alex, really like your videos. 
but I'm no longer going to watch them. I'm just like, bro, tell me more. Let's read into this email. Uh, to sum it up, because it was quite long, he basically said he doesn't like the fact that I state all the prices in US dollars and sometimes only mention Canadian dollars. Uh, and he said that I should be listing every currency possible so we have a better understanding of the price. Sorry, guys. My bad, eh? I'll try to get that for next time. Um, like, just look it up. Like, men can't use a converter. Oh my God, dude, I know. Maybe it's OC. State the price in Bitcoin only. I know, dude. <laughs> How much is the albatross in yen? I'm not sure. Let's let's go find some. Let's go look up made up currencies. All right. So. I hope everyone had a good day though. The best of days. Did my gift, KG, yes, sorry, I was in the middle of the story. KG, thank you so much for the subs, bro. I really appreciate those, man. KG, how was your day? Did you have any funny postal office stories? <laughs> Do you have any funny stories that we should, we should hear about? Needs a numpad? I know, dude. All right, so Icky guys sent this over. Um, we're gonna be looking at this today. I am not keeping this unit, but this is something that Icky guy and I, uh, in the past I've looked at, um, and it was sponsored in the past and stuff like that. So we'll just, this is still part of that, you know. We looked at the IC and they have, I guess, gone past the IC phase. So I love the post office stories, building my Neo 80 today. Ooh, what are you putting inside of it? It is a very nice purple. I actually think it looks better from this angle. Eh, maybe the same. Different light hits things. Yeah, it's a very nice purple. Um, I think the idea of this board is more of a classic TKL with uh, gaskets. Um, so don't expect any like crazy wild things happening with this particular build today. But uh, it's always fun doing classic TKLs. So this is gonna run you 350 if you decide to pick this up. And then we have a little tray. So the box, you know, kind of like actually what we saw in the Wuche box. Quite nice, quite premium feeling. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool. The Anno on this is very nice as well. I've already looked at one in the past. <clears throat> now this is the prototype. This is like one of many prototypes that we've seen of this. Yeah, the packaging's nice. It is a very nice purple. Uh, let's actually move this over to the side. So this is just missing the Albatross logo. It's like a, almost like a bird on the back, basically a bird. But this is the PVD version. Now you guys know how I feel about PVD versions. I'm not the biggest fan of PVD, but some people like PVD. And you know what? They wanted to show off the PVD today. How can I do this? Let me grab a little desk pad so I don't scratch up the board. I'll peel this off afterwards, but it's a nice purple. Genuinely a very, very nice purple. Ritzer, thank you so much for the Glad call. I could catch a stream for the first time thank in you, a while. Dude. Thank you. And KG, you said you're using cream sodas. Very nice. 8,008 is a nice set. Crazy, I was crazy once. This case is so sweet, I love the packaging. Uh, bacon, I, I hope it turns out really nice too. Cause TKLs, especially more classic style TKLs are very up my alley for stuff that I also like. Oh, there's some like residue here. I don't know if it's from like a tape or a glue inside the, inside the case, but uh, it's not scratches or anything. It's just literally a residue of glue. Unsure what that is. I can wipe that off afterwards. You know what though, actually, you know what I think it's from? Ahoy Alex Zotlov. Yeah. Okay, little note for Icky Guy. You see the inside of the box? They do, they they basically glue these together. And I think some of the, some of the glue from the back here probably got on, side, on the keyboard. Also, Aristus, thank you so much for the Prime. Really appreciate that. Not the end of the world. I kind of want to peel this off now, but I also don't. Um, in terms of design, uh, it kind of follows this whole wing kind of design, right? So you'll see it also on the weight when it does get, you know, etched onto the weight here in the back. But these are supposed to be like the wings over here, kind of like a bird flapping its wing, an albatross flapping. Uh, the side profile's sort of a take on a classic, you know, just box on wedge, but it is nice. The front height is 20 mil. So again, top end of what I normally like. Uh, I find 20 if you guys are also interested in more of the ergonomics of things. 
Um, it's a very slight piece of ergonomic, but oh yeah, the, is it on the side of the box? Oh yeah, it is. So this is what's gonna be on the weight. Sorry, I'll go back to my ergonomic thing, like this. Um, but 20 mil is exactly the height that I think you're, for me anyways, that I'm okay with not using a wrist rest. Any higher kind of makes me wanna use a wrist rest. So 20 mil, I think is the top end. Absolute top end. Uh, what do you think of these seven mounting styles in the Zoom 65? Oh man. Um, I think it's fun. I think it's awesome. However, I've been noticing with all those keyboards that have like five or six mounting styles, some are just not well thought out. So it, I think it just comes down to maybe personal preference, maybe what your taste is. Uh, but I'm like, I think it's hit and miss with those things. But yeah, let's take this apart afterwards and then we can explore some more. But let's take a look what else is inside the box. I'm interested in the magnetic mount on that one there too. But I mean, after trying the Freya with those springs, I'm very not impressed with the springs. Uh, these are the other gaskets. They sent me some new gaskets. We'll be using those. I'll put these to the side. I think these are feet. We have the JST. Oops. Oh yeah, they have a split plate, which I really like on keyboards, by the way. Kind of helps with some resonance. Now we have one of every plate. Um, please don't get mad at me when I say this next sentence. I'm going to be using Cherry Nixies today. Uh, it was either that or H1 switches, and I was like, you know what I think would sound excellent in this? Cherry Nixies. Um, but I was also thinking we use perhaps this plate here. I don't have FR4. I was thinking perhaps one of these two plastic plates today. But I'll let you guys pick, because I think all three of these will probably sound really good. Well, hopefully sound really good. I have high hopes for this. Uh, I'll let you guys pick today, though. We are drinking more maple coffee. Yeah, today I needed some coffee. Like I said, today's been a slow burn of a day. I've been like, uh, just at it all day with working on the computer and just taking photos and editing things. So it's been a day. Uh, the white one is Palm. I don't think it's, I think polypropylene is usually like a dark gray or a black. I, I, I think this is um, Palm. I'm gonna knock something over with this box. And then we have a sod roll PCB and a hot swap PCB. But I think that we're gonna use hot swap today. So the sod roll PCB is by Gondo. Good classic Gondo. What's up, Angel? How you doing? It's a good classic Gondo PCB. Good quality stuff. Uh, I think good PCBs matter a lot in the board as well. So nice, nice Gondo quality here. And then we have a hot swap one. I'm not sure what the, I guess, what the layout is in the hot swap, if there's any limitations. Actually, I think the only thing you might lose on this one here is ISO, which does the plate support ISO? I don't think it does. No ISO support on the, on the plate, but you do get ISO support on the PCB. So hopefully they release plate files that maybe we can edit and alter, which is by the way, a great thing if you guys end up doing Icky Guy, because uh, I think you guys are in chat. Yeah, a lot of options for this. Wish it was an Alice. That's the plan, perfect. Really? I, I don't know, I think this looks really nice as a TKL. The purple's great, it looks amazing. I was thinking for keycaps later, Taro, but I don't, I don't think Taro is the right play now. Now that I see it like in front of me, I know this sounds so boring, but wouldn't Wob look sick on this? Oh, we're offering ISO plates in the GB as well? Perfect. I, maybe I missed that note. Right, let's put some of these things back. <clears throat> purple Knight? Oh man, you guys want to do the all purple build today? Thing is, if Purple Knight doesn't... If it's not the right purple, Purple Knight might kind of suck on this. I don't have that set, unfortunately, Fabs. Also, thank you guys again for being here. I really appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. We could just go like a classic Frost Witch. Could. Dracula might look really sick on this. Actually, that's a really solid choice, Rock. I, I think that's a pretty good choice. <clears throat> Shoshin could also look pretty sick on this too. 
All right, we'll, we'll have some time to think about it for now. We'll have some time to think about it. We're gonna do some stabilizers and we'll, we'll get to that point. One could say it's a rock solid choice. Man, you know, I was gonna make that dad joke, but I was like, you know, man, I think, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip on that one today. But then you, you did it for me and I really appreciate that seeing stars. You have no, you have no idea how much that means to me. You know, believe it or not, I'm not really into GMK Mecha, Icky Guy. I'm not, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Mecha colorway. Me personally. It's just a, I, I know a lot of people love it. But me personally, not too, too into it. Still idea from someone else in chat. Did someone else say it? Oh, man. Compliment for Orum? Hey, you know what else gets stolen all the time? My heart, because Orum, Orum takes it. Hope you're having a great day, man. All right, hope you're having the best of days today. And I know it's a Wednesday, but I hope this week here has been absolutely insane. <clears throat> All good, best parts of keyboards is sub subjectivity. Very correct, very, very correct. All right. I've been seeing a lot of debates about the uh, Keycap set from Novel Keys everywhere. The Deep Field one from, I guess, well, Key Machine. I'm, uh, seems to be very, uh, all over the place with the conversation there. I prefer 7U personally. We have to use 7U here because it's a wind keyless unit. But I mean, 6.25, nothing wrong. I started off the hobby using only using 6.2s and I was like, yo, 6.2s sound better. And then I realized that I'm just like a fool. And then uh, they both sound kind of the same. So I just gave up on that life, you know? Uh, let's grab our, not my screwdriver kit. Let's grab my, where is my brush? Here it is. I actually don't mind the set. Um, I think that's the fun part though, is a lot of these like limited drops from the key machine are gonna be stuff that's i would say that like is kind of a little out there and a little bit more daring which i think is more fun so i'm here for it though i think the set looks cool i'm also oh, let's let's clip these before i forget what is the worst example of color matching you've seen in a hi alex by? what keyboard is Spooky. that you are using with the white keycap this is the moon tower um, but if you wanted something that looks somewhat similar to this, like the Balder would be a good, you know, choice and it's made of glass too. But thank you so much for the sub. Worst group by, uh, color matching. Um, okay. Are you talking about one that I've seen in the hobby or are you talking about one, um, here, here's the question that I've seen or that I've participated in. Cause I think that I've participated in the worst color matching ever is the Rama keyboard that I have. That has to be the most absolute like thing that I've purchased and ended up being abysmal. I, I ordered like a basically what's supposed to be a bronze and I got PP yellow. Like it, it just looked like piss. And I'm just like, man, this is, this is not what I ordered. And the other jewels. And uh, I just I just couldn't build it. It's buried away in a closet somewhere. Like, I honestly could not bring myself to build it, man. I just did not like it. It was so ugly. Even though it's a great board that's designed by someone who, you know, I think is really cool in the hobby. But yeah, I just could not bring myself. And that was one of the, the Rama's... What do they call their their thing? The foundry thing? So it wasn't Rama who designed those. It was just Rama who ran them. Ever thought of getting the color changed? Eh, I've thought about it. I think you know what it is, is I'm not like dying to build the board. So I haven't really pulled the trigger on, I guess, doing it. But I saw some people mention um, Peaches and cream, and I, I think I agree. I think peaches and cream was pretty horrid to see. That was a pretty bad one. I think a lot of people also hated that Infinity Key 
color matching of the um, some of their keycaps slash desk pads. Yeah, I was thinking about sending it to Reagan. <laughs> I think they also had pretty bad um, renders slash color matching. To me, color matching took like six rounds. I'd rather it take a while and get done correctly than it never getting done right in the first place, you know? And then the vendor dipped, oh gosh. Uh, there was a few, I think Pastel was the worst offender though. But if I'm, I actually, I would like to comment on that. As someone who does pictures, um, I no longer, like I'm not taking pictures to be photo accurate. Oh my god, Sacker, thank you so much for the 10 tier 1s, man. Thank you, dude. I really appreciate that, dude. I hope you're having a great day, man. God damn, dude. Um, but as someone who doesn't go out of his way, I don't, I mean, I can, I've done it in the past. I've, I've done, like, reviews with color, ac like, color accuracy and stuff like that on certain things, and I think there's merit to doing reviews with color, um, color, color cards and just making sure everything, the white balance is good. But... A very, and I don't mean to be rude, but a very novice approach to selling a product that relies on being color matched is to stylize your photos. A very novice approach. Because like you're going to put a filter on it and then suddenly everything looks different. You know, whether you just want to warm up the photo a bit, then you're warming up the keycaps. So I think ultimately if, for example, pastel was done right and marketed right, because I think they took photos. It wasn't even like they had renders, I believe, at the beginning. Or at least if, if the photos came out, you know, because I think they did do photos and they were like, here's an example of what this will look like. You just can't put filters. You can't do lifestyle shots for selling a product like that that needs to be color accurate. Tuna, what's up? And also, Sacker, thank you again, man. I hope you're having a great day. I saw someone hella cute on screen and couldn't resist. Oh my goodness, Sacker, thank you, dude. To piggyback off that, do you think uh, it should fall on the customer to eat the cost when the project goes south like that? Um, so wait, what do we mean by that? Do we mean like if the vendor fails at taking color accurate photos or like if the vendor can't produce the exact product? I think that's the designer or vendor's responsibility at that, pro uh, that point, um, if it's that bad. Like for example, I, I if it's like a small portion off that, you know, you can maybe attribute to someone's color accuracy of their monitor. Yeah, I was punk, punk literally stole the words right out of my mouth there. Um, like monitor calibration can go a long way too. Um, you know, even our, our eyes might perceive something a little smidge different too. Um, so I think there there is room for error or room for, you know, some, some, Accuracy not being what a complete 100, you know, maybe falling between that 95 to 100 range. But I think there's some stuff that's like, all right, you maybe should have let us know this did not turn out like the renders because I did not buy this product. Me personally, I think it falls on the vendor at that point, or at least the designer, whoever's running and approving these color matches. Um, not so much on the customer because the customer is sold on the idea of something being a certain color or certain way, right? So it'd be, it'd be, I think, a very um, bad thing to make that on the customer, personally. Thank you, Koala. Appreciate the 11 months of being here. Hello, hello to you. I hope life's treating you well. Cream whiteboard. Ooh. What's available right now that would look good on that? Hmm. If tiramisu is sold out... I mean, if you don't... If you want PBT then perhaps something like Cafe. I think Cafe is available, I think on Canning Keys. Uh, but there's a lot that can go with like a cream board. I think even if you wanna do something fun, you can even pick up something like panels. Panels might look really cool if you wanna do something like more colorful. Uh, here's the newest blunder from EPBT Brutalist Designer. Yeah, see, and this is the other thing that the photo to the right, even though it's a render, 
like my eyes looking at the two photos, I see a smidge of green in that photo where the photo on the left also looks like there's some color tint going on too. I think that both the render kind of doesn't look right. And also the, the actual, like maybe the Pantone chip is dead on, right? But the problem is when you're not doing things correctly, when you're adding filters, when you're adding like styling and color, like coloring and stuff like that, then yeah, it becomes a little bit different. Oh, and that's the other argument too that I see people make a lot is like Pantone chips. You know, it's one thing to tell me the Pantone chip, but here's, here's the difficult part about this. You can tell a customer, yes, it's supposed to be Pantone this, but then you make renders that look nothing like it. I think that's problematic personally. I also think the IRL photo is poorly lit as well. Um, there's been sets like that where people have been very like angry about sets and it ended up just being uh, very different uh, because they didn't take a photo correctly. GMK Nord. I don't think I ever got in on Nord. Who ran Nord? I mean, these look perceivably different, but again, I think, uh, I think I'd like to see something in person. Oh, so here's a great example of something that was very, very weird. Um, Mode's keycap set. I think it was the Tomorrow one, or which one was it? One of the keycap sets from Mode. They look under some lighting gray, but when I put them under studio, was it studio lighting or a little bit of a warm light? Um, they look green. And it's like the strangest phenomena ever. And like, I noted that in my review saying that like, hey, dude, they don't look, they don't look, uh, whatever color it was, they look kind of green or whatever it was. But uh, it's interesting how light can play a difference in all that stuff as well. Yeah, I was, I was actually, not to, not to toot my own horn, I, I was very happy doing that review because like, it allowed me to kind of um, flex some, I guess some, not knowledge per se, but it allowed me to kind of like flex my muscle of like, okay, so here's how we can perceive different things differently and, or things differently. And it just, it made me happy seeing that my review might have helped someone either not buy it or buy it, you know, like it's, it's a good feeling when you do something like 100% by the book and it just makes you feel like, okay, this has helped someone. But I think reviewing things as simple as that are a little easier to do. Dolch looks brown under certain lights. Yeah, this is very purple. Yeah, it's very purple. Hanami Dongo. You know, Nev, I don't remember that set at all. They were in the mail by the time I saw the review. Oh, really slow? Did I do that late? No, I think I did that pretty I, I mean, I did it when I got the set. I think I did it like literally the week after. Took some time to take all the photos. I want to do more of those keycap reviews, but they just kind of seem pointless because you, usually you get the keycaps and everyone's already bought them, you know? Uh, guys for Icky Guy, we promised a color match. What Alex told you today is our color, green color variant. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is green. This is just their attempt at green. They couldn't do it. Uh, there's not so much good in in-stock purple keycaps. Or oh, there's not many good in-stock purple? You know which one was actually pretty good? That's ABS. Well, I don't know if it's in stock right now. Fairy. KBD fans sent me over an early copy of it. Fairy looked really cool. Actually, Fairy would look really nice on today's board. Uh, Alex, what's the set on the keyboard you're using right now? This is just Kikobo white on black. This is like one of the original Kikobo runs. And if you look carefully, some of the modifiers don't look that great. Uh, actually, I don't know why this keycap set got really dusty for some reason. It was on a stand in the front, but I don't think I dusted it. But they've since changed some of the way their molds work for like shift. And uh, they look great now. Did I say white on black? Black on white. Yes, yes, my mistake. Actually, looking at the purple keycaps too for my Kage, thinking about GMK Taro. Taro would look nice on that. The piece, is it a PC one? A PC Kage? If 
Fairy is more like a Blurple. Dude, I bought Blurple, all right? I have no idea where I put it. I used it, I have it on a board, but I can't find my box for it. And I'm hoping I can find it because I have a board in the future that I wanna use it for. So I hope I didn't lose it. Uh, Do you see the RMK post about Oblo getting a B rating from vendor system? Uh, I did. I mean, this is exactly what I said though. I think the syst I think a system has merit, right? Which I appreciate. And I appreciate them attempting to do something. But I think I even said this the day the thing got launched. Um, I gave some of my input on like what I think should change. And there were some like things I didn't really agree with, which I made, you know, apparent. But it's just, it becomes like a, a very one-sided thing if only one or two people are, are managing it. I mean, even to some degree, like my little vendor list is pretty one-sided. So what's this? What's this, what's this one here? Uh, I don't remember what set we were talking about, Nev. So when it comes down to like that tier list for the vendors, I think giving them rankings based off of like business things is a bit silly. Well, I think it's very silly personally. Um, I think if, so I was, okay, let me, let me start from the scratch. I think the idea of having like A, B, C, D, F, Z, whatever is silly because you know what's gonna happen. Even if the system makes sense, the average consumer is not gonna look at, well, what does C mean? They're gonna see A and go, A is best. Triple A is even better. I want triple A. So no one's gonna read it. Let's be 1000% fucking real. No one's gonna read that. Like the average consumer, sorry. The average consumer is not gonna read that. Someone who's dabbling in keyboards, who maybe stumbles upon the list, isn't gonna read the legends and go, okay, well, that makes sense that they only have one employee because it's a small business. They're gonna go, well, shit, that probably puts me at risk. So it paints a lot of people in a bad light, um, which is bad, okay? What I think is a better form of doing these things is, and I was doing some thinking, well, what I thought was gonna be better was maybe more like a trust pilot system where everyone makes reviews. However, you still have a lot of people who are very loud in the keyboard space, in any space, who they'll just either make things up or they'll have a small grievance and that will be like a one out of five because like maybe they ordered something and they put in the, you know, the wrong credit card and yes, that's probably a, what I think is even better though, if you guys want like my opinion on this, I think um, a trust pilot is better, but I think what's even better is if you just go full transparency mode, have a website that tracks every single group by, not the company itself. But for example, if I don't know, I'm making up a store, if a store is called Triangle, right? And they had one, one or two failed group buys like eight years ago, it'd be cool to see like, okay, well this company now has had 18 successful ones or 3000 successful ones, but they did have one or two. Like it's just, it would make more sense to go either A, full transparency or let users review it instead of one guy managing it. Um, th those two systems, that, like Trustpilot, where everyone gets to write reviews and everyone can like contribute, makes sense or going full transparency. And to be honest, I don't even think things like, when I say full transparency, I mean like on, on um, if something has failed or not, not how much money a company's made. I could fucking care less. Uh, it's not, I don't even think that's going to be that important, right? Um, I don't care how many employees they have because you know what? I've seen companies recently, Oda Keeps, they've had five people and because one guy was holding all the, you know, the coins in one purse, like he let it all go down the drain, right? It doesn't matter. I think what matters is just the history of what someone does. Even to that extent, it probably doesn't matter, right? Because anyone can flip it any single time. Um, again, either you go, Hey, let's see how they've done in the past, or you go trust pilot system where everyone can contribute to that. That's the only two ways that I can, I can think of if you really, really need some way to kind of like help newbies in, in the, in the, uh, community or sphere determine if something is safe or not. And again, it's just a guideline at the end of the day too. I don't think it could link it to you. What happened? Sorry, Techium? 
Oh, the uh, t oh, you can you can link it here. What do I think of GMK MTNU? I like it. I think it's a fun profile. I can't wait to see more of it. Um, because I don't think there's too many sets with uh, MTNU yet. But it's a fun it's a fun profile. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Camera. Oh, my camera didn't like this uh, this scene. But uh, I don't know. If you guys have a good suggestion too, that'd be fun to hear. But yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think grading vendors based off of that thing works to the degree that they hope it did. I still appreciate the effort that they did. Like it's it's still an idea, and you can't get mad at them for that. At least it's a stride in a direction. Maybe not the right one, but at least it's a step somewhere. Uh, and it's someone at least making some initiative and getting the ball rolling with at least a conversation, right? Um, by the way, Alex, what was your Insta post a little while ago about your Logitech mouse going away? Oh, yeah, okay, so long story short, and I am the laziest person for this. I don't want to use this mouse anymore because it has been bothering me and the grip on this, even though I've washed it and everything, it just feels tacky. And if I had this problem with my last MX Master as well, before I got rid of it and threw it away because it was disgusting. This this finish that they put on this, it feels tacky eventually. And I don't like the way it feels. I have this mouse, which I had painted, but I keep forgetting this uses a micro cable. And quite frankly, I hate the fact that I need this its own separate cable to charge that thing. So, I, I don't even know what I want to do. I haven't. I bought another mouse for playing games with. I got the Lamzu, but for my work area, I just I haven't really found a mouse that I like. Yeah, I'm I'm a little disappointed in the MX Master series. I think I've had two mice now where I'm just like, yeah, this finish is awful. The soft touch finish always seems to do that. I I am never buying another mouse with soft touch. It is to me gross. I got the Lambsu uh, Atlantis, I believe it's called. I had a, a Razer mouse. I really liked the Razer. However, the battery life on it is abysmal. And uh, and I think Razer is a pretty cool brand, but yeah, I just, I, I couldn't deal with charging it every two days. Which one, the Death Adder V3 Pro, is that wired or is it wireless? I think I want to stick with wireless for the desk. Clean really well with just a baby wipe, then use baby powder to dust over the soft touch. I'm gonna try that actually. If I can revive this mouse from being like not tacky feeling, then I'd still use it. Um, even though I don't think it's for me, the, it's kind of heavy nowadays, so. All right, let's put some wires in this thing. And then we're gonna use a 70 wire, correct? We are. By the way guys, okay, I have to, this is, this is a bit of a flex, all right, bro? I, I, I love this flavor. I had this for lunch today, this flavor. Zero sugar cherry. That's my new kryptonite, bro. That's it. That that tastes so good. Pepsi for lunch. Well, I, I had I had this one slice of pizza. Kryptonite. Hey, what's up, man? I mean, I could be talking to you. Pepsi Max Mango. I have never seen that. That sounds delicious. Nev, what's this? But then I gotta get its own mouse pad. Uh, man, I don't want that. I, I, you know, I appreciate the link though, Nev. No wonder you're feeling a bit meh. I mean, it was just leftover. Well, actually, no, we made this one here, but I, I just wanted something quick and simple. I was busy. I mean, I woke up feeling like trash, so. Oh, you can? But what happens if I want to, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I like that aesthetic. I'm being picky. Pepsi Max Lime. I've only seen the cherry one. No, I had someone paint this, but they retired now. Like they don't do any painting anymore. Uh, it was Leonardo de Maus. Oh wait, I have 70 wires in here. Let's use one of these ones. You could have the charging pad off screen and just leave it there when you're not streaming. That's not a bad idea. I think my thing with that though is, hear me out. 
I think it just means more things, you know? Oh, Toby, you said use the Razor Bastless series with your stream streak. I use the Bastless, I don't know if I have. I was recently informed that you prefer just plain chips. You live in the land of amazing chip flavors and you choose plain? In all capitals. Coach Chuck, 59. Um, I, <laughs> I am an original chip kind of guy, all right? And to me, don't, don't fucking hate me for saying this, guys. To me, the different original chips, like Lay's, you know, Lay's Baked, uh, Miss Vicky's, there's so many different brands that make good original chips and they all taste kind of different, all right? I like exploring the vast differences of original chips. I know someone's l looking at the screen right now going, you're fucking crazy, Alex. No all dressed nerd. <laughs> Um, no, 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 no flavors. I actually did try for the first time salt and vinegar and I did not like it. I was just not, not into it. Like it was okay, but never again. I like original chips, man. There's like, there's like two or three, um, flavored chips that I would say are good. And one of the flavored chips I think is really good. Don't hate me for this is the uh, honey butter chips. Uh, I think it's a Korean brand, is it? And then I also like, it's by a brand called, is it Burt's? They are um, Guinness, Guinness flavored chips are insane. And then the only other flavored chip that I don't mind is, and which you can't even buy anymore, I forget even the company. There was one company that made, um, bacon flavored chips and it literally tasted like bacon every other bacon flavored chip that i've ever tried in my life always just tastes like barbecue and i'm not a big fan of barbecue no it wasn't lays it was like some local brand that i i picked up zaps never heard of zaps dude i'm a big i'm a big uh, alex how do you feel about sour cream I'm not a big sour cream guy i'm sort of a picky eater I think I've been doing pretty good on trying new things though, but I'm pretty picky. Uh, come to the UK, we got flavors on lockdown. Okay, another flavor chip that I did try was a UK brand. It was, I don't remember it now. My girlfriend got it for me for like Christmas or something. This is last year, but it was um, an English brand chip and it was like a chicken flavor. It. I don't know if it was Walker's. I don't remember the name Walker's. It was not like a Lay's chip though. It was a little bit different, but it was absolutely delicious. It was so good, but it's also really expensive. Um, uh, it might've been something like that, but I don't remember the name Walker's on it. It was a small little bag, it had like a character on it or something. Just stick to the original bacon. Well, I don't know. I still like my original chips. In fact, I, I I saw them on sale the other day. It was two for five. So you bet your ass I picked two bags up. I have tried some of the Asian chips as well. I tried, uh, they had a prime rib flavor that I tried. Could not care about it. It was, it was like a one-time thing. It was good. It, it tasted fine. But yeah, it was kind of potent as well. Do you think people gate gatekeep in the chip community like they gatekeep with keyboards? Honestly, yes. There's probably brands I've never heard of that people don't share. My girlfriend loves the cucumber one. She is big onto that flavor. Um, I think she also just likes plain old ketchup chips. Well, I say plain old, but I think that's pretty standard here in Canada to like those. I've tried the chip, um, the shrimp chips. They're okay. I really want to try. Are they the salted, the salted egg one or those egg chips? I don't like ketchup chips at all. I think they're terrible. I really want to try those, but I don't know what they're called now. But they were like twenty dollars a bag. Like they were fucking expensive, and I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm. I'm at that level in my life where I can afford something like that. It's crazy. 
think that's what they were. I can't remember what they were now. I'm gonna go raid my crisp cupboard. It's 1 a.m. and I'm hungry. Do it. Nah, man. Salt. I don't remember if it was salt today. I remember the flavor, but it was expensive. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm ever gonna do this in my life. Oh, did I leave one too many of these stabilizer housings? Oh, no, I did. Uh, how are you today? Just snuck out of dinner with my wife and her sisters. How was that? What did you guys have for dinner? Did everyone have, was, I guess, is everyone having fun? But I'm doing pretty good, man. Just chilling. I kind of feel a little bit more energized sitting on stream with you guys now. I feel good about this. A little bit more energized. Floppy french fries with a decent coat of salt are perfect. No, bro. I, hear me out. If you're going to give me french fries, if they're a little bit soggy and floppy, I'm out, bro. Yeah, I need I need them to have that nice crisp on the outside and that nice soft inside. You know what I mean? Like, I think I gotta have that. I gotta have that, dude. Crispy fries just taste stale. What? Finally, someone speaks the truth. Okay, here's a question for you guys, though. I don't mean make you guys hungry. This is a this is a dead serious question. So you guys need to answer this very carefully. Best cut of fries. All right. Best cut. Crinkle. I, to me, like crinkle is like down at the bottom. Curly, curly can be good if done right. Yeah, I think I'm with. I'm I'm sorta with disguised. I think he's the only person I think I saw even say this. If you can do a nice steak cut properly, like you double fry those, my mouth's watering already. Those things slap, dude. The smile ones. Okay, let me let me tell you a story right now, bro. Those things. Smile fries shouldn't even be classified as fries. I don't know what those are. They do do. To be honest, I, I think those are the worst cut of fries. To me. We all have different list, lists, uh, but I think smile fries are, are probably one of the worst. You're wrong. <laughs> okay, Alex. Dude, they taste, they taste like mashed potatoes. There's barely a crisp on those things. And when you do crisp them, the inside dries out. Steak cut are perfect for sauces. Red Robin campfire sauce. Uh, we don't have Red Robin here, unfortunately. I hear good things about that place. Well, mixed things, but mostly good. <sighs> I got the chat moving with the fries. The fries are a very important topic in society. I like McDonald's fries. I've been, I think I've said this like five times, but you guys are gonna hate this opinion. If you were to tell, like, if you were to give me fast food fries and say, hey, Alex, which one do you want? Burger King. I think Burger King fries taste really good. Sorry. Alex. Kenny! Agree? Think smarter, bro. Me and you were... I feel you, bro. Booger King? <laughs> Those are the floppy ones? Nah, man. I, the, the Burger King fries that I've had at the locations I've been to... Want to see a new sticker craft? Yeah, yeah. Angel, so DM it to me. Angel, best fries. Which ones are they? Best uh, takeout fries. Where to put the PC? It's right here. Is that a is that a place? I've never been there, Angel. I don't think they have that here. Is that a fast food joint? I don't know if that's like a Cali thing though. Chick Fil A waffles. I never. I they have Chick Fil A here now. I've just never been. Man, I haven't had Wendy's in forever. Oh well. By the way, also Icky Guy is including foam with their kits. Um, they said that the keyboard was designed around not using foam, but they, they said they're gonna include it anyways. Very cool, but I'm not gonna use it today. But I appreciate them for including it because foam is fun for people who want to modify their sound a bit. Wendy's nuts. I knew someone's gonna say that. I was waiting for that one. I was like, yeah, well, someone's gonna say it. So might as well just lean into the conversation a bit. Waffle fries are good for topping with a bunch of stuff. You know, I can agree with that. They're good for toppings and when you wanna like almost treat it like a nacho. 
Uh, is this going to be a giveaway board, just a personal for the collection? This is going back to... Actually, I think I'm even giving this back probably in two days. We are not keeping this board today. So we, we've looked at this board in the past. I actually have never built the board. I don't think I have. Maybe Icky Guy can correct me on that. But I think last time, the last two times or one time that I've looked at it, it's been already built for me. Uh, so this is my first time looking at it and building it. But I have already just looked at it in the past. I don't like anything on fries, Jabal. I like my fries like I like my potato chips. Uh, original with salt. So the only thing I don't mind on potato or fries sometimes is Cajun seasoning. That's it. Sometimes. Um... <laughs> that's it, man. I, that's it. Cajun fries are okay. I think it depends on the location you go to, though. Like, Five Guys has pretty good fries. I don't mind their fries. Albeit, they're kind of fucking expensive. Oh, what plate are we doing? What plate do you guys want? Palm, PC, or Alu? Which one are we doing today? Ooh, we got some palm enjoyers in chat. Let me see what Angel sent me. <laughs> and of course you would do that, Angel. That's a pretty nice uh, Mac 10 though, man. Disco Tech Prisma 2 Collection. Damn. All right, we'll do palm today. Yeah, I am correct. This is palm, right? Alu then palm. Alu plus Cherry Blacks is too OP. Well, what do you got? It's a gasket. Remember, this is not top mount. Here, I'm gonna put a poll, okay? We'll do a poll because, well, let's get everyone in chat on this here. Uh, plate to use, oh, I spelled use wrong, but whatever. Uh, palm, PC, or Alu. We'll do a nice, good, short, one minute poll. Nixie's on palm. I have used Nixie's with palm and PC for top mount. Uh, it sounds delicious. It sounds great. But I don't know about it for gasket. Bro, did I? Hey, listen. If you guys vote for PC Alu, that's just a round two vote, all right? Man, I hit tab and I thought it went to the next one, bro. You know, I guess I didn't. Yeah, I misspelled some words, Angel. It's fine, man. Can't type. I only build keyboards, man. I never said I could type on them. I just build them. <laughs> what camera do you take uh, around Toronto, Alex? Um, I guess it depends. I think if I'm just walking around taking pictures and I don't, like, have anything to shoot, I'd rather just bring a little Fuji with me. But if I know I'm, like, on a mission to go shoot something, then I'll bring, like, a Leica or something. Uh... What if it ends in 50-50? God, man. <laughs> Never looked for accurate angel. Please, bro. X100VI. Oh, did they announce a new X100 for Fuji? I love Fuji, man, but it's a... Uh... Palm? Okay, we'll use Palm. Listen, Fuji needs to figure out something with their production or something, man. Because I want it the, uh, I really, really want it, an X100V for a while. And I think the fact that it's so unattainable just makes me not want it anymore. Like, I just couldn't care less. I'm just coping with other camera gear. <clears throat> uh, you too, Danger? I need an X100V Lite that won't literally break my bank account. Well, it shouldn't. It just, it shouldn't be that expensive, but it's that expensive. I think at one point the actual MSRP was even lower, if I'm correct. It just, it's only that expensive because TikTok. I remember I looked at it in the store and I said, because my friend was using, um, at the time when the X100V just came out, my friend was using an X100, was it F the last iteration? I was like, that's a nice camera, I want one. So I weighed it, the X100V came out. By the time I had to make purchases for stream, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna wait. I waited for the summer, and then I guess it went viral on TikTok or something. And dude, so nice. I- Hello, hello, Alex. Could I miss the good old days of story moments with sad song. We did one earlier, did you see Spike? We did a sad story with the, with the, sad, the sad music. 
we did it. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just too expensive. Like it went from, I don't remember how much it was originally, but then it shot up to like almost $2,000. And I was like, man, I don't know if this is worth the price anymore. Um, I don't know. So I just decided to not get it. And then I got a Rico instead, but I ended up selling the Rico. I think my phase of just having a walk around camera has turned into something else, uh, which I mean, it is what it is, right? I'm, uh, I was, I was in a process of just getting back into my, my camera groove because I took a break from taking photos basically of non keyboard things. Uh, TikTok popularity ruins so much. I wouldn't even say it ruined it per se, but it just made it because it made it so popular that everyone bought it. And from what I understand too, a lot of people purchased it, realized they didn't need it, and then just tried to flip it. I loved the GR. And I'm, I'm gonna speak from a place of, and again, I'm gonna be very honest, probably a little bit of uh, luck, maybe some privilege, probably privilege. Um, I get, because of my line of what I do, I get the, ch the chance to try a whole bunch of different cameras. And the GR was amazing. It was a great pocket camera. Like the sensor was great. Um, it had some great internal camera features. However, I got a little bit spoiled by some other choices that I made and decided to use. And I had a friend who let me use their camera that was also a very small compact camera. And I'm like, man, I like this more. Um, so I ended up going a different route of what I wanted to do uh, photography wise. Well, you know what's um, about that Irish? I originally started with cameras. I used to be a product photographer Just showed a long up. time ago. Can I quick peek the case Alex Zotolov? Yeah. Here's the internals. I know the screws are one in one there, but it's internal. And then here's the external. I haven't taken off the plastic yet. It's a beautiful purple. Thank you, Switch Keys. And thank you, Corner Graphic, again. I appreciate the two years of being here. Well, actually, 30, 30 months, 24, 24 uh, month streak. So two year streak, crazy, bro. And thank you, Switch Keys. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's put some more Nixies inside. But I started off as a product photographer. I did product photography in my mid 20s and I've always been into photography. Um, and then I just, I started doing like street photography and stuff like afterwards. But I think my job and working in product photography for products I just did not care about kind of killed the whole want for, I guess, camera gear for me. And then I, I hate to say this, dude. Switching to Sony was probably one of the worst choices I ever made in like my photo career, I guess. Hey, Schwinn, how you doing? It was probably the worst move for me. Uh, and I, I kind of regret going to Sony. It, it did one of two things, all right? Well, both things. It did two things with my, my Sony experience. First of all, three things technically. It always made me feel like I was missing out on gear uh, because Sony just released new stuff every two seconds, which was kind of like, fuck, am I missing? Do I need the new, no, do we need a new body? Do I need this new lens? Like, um, and I think intertwined in that as well, there was just a lot of hype with Sony and a lot of people giving their opinions and me being a little bit more, uh, you know, I guess vulnerable to some some of the, I guess, influencers at the time. I thought I needed everything. I was like, fuck, do I have to sell this to get a Sigma lens? Like, is the Sony lens not the move? Okay, well, this guy's telling me I need this. The next thing Sony did to me with my, my camera stuff was shooting Sony really kind of made me edit a certain way. And what I mean edit a certain way is Sony's photos are very clinical. Like they're, they're, they're kind of boring coming out of the camera. So you end up really stylizing them with colors and just, and I just found myself leaning towards that like very stereotypical orange and teal shot. And I think that also kind of, in a lot of ways, and again, everyone's different, kind of killed a lot of creativity for me. I couldn't just capture a moment and be happy with the photo that I took, which is fine. Also art is editing, right? I love editing. I, I, I live, I live for it, but it made me feel bored. 
it just, I was like, man, none of these photos look good. They all look hyper edited. And if I leave them straight to the camera or leave them with just a few edits, they all feel very sterile. That's when I was like, okay, how do I get out of this, like this rut? And then my friend at the time, Basic Builds, who she does keyboards. I think she, I don't know if she wants, ever wants to come back to, to build streams. She was using Fuji and I've always dabbled with the idea. And I'm like, man, Fuji looks cool. So Fuji is what I ultimately went with. I haven't had that experience with my a7 III in the last five years, but I always felt like my picks from the a6000 felt flat and overly green. Well, I think the last Sony camera I used for street stuff was about five or six years ago. Uh, and I had an a7R2. Uh, but I, I always felt like the a7R2, maybe, and again, maybe it was just the experience with the body, you know? Uh, but at the time, I just did not care for it. It just wasn't my thing. Because I've seen some great shots come out of the new Sony cameras. And Sony autofocus is probably still the best in the biz, I believe. But yeah, it's just, I think for me right now, if I'm gonna go out and take pictures, it's gonna be on something different. Uh, Sony naming schemes are pretty confusing. It's amazing for night shots and I love walking around. Yeah, no, I mean, they're great, right? Definitely wanna call this out since you're on the plate now. The plate was designed with Gondo. It's a no brainer to use his experience. What happened? Uh, the plate was designed with Gondo. Oh, okay, so Gondo helped out with the plate. Gondo's a good guy, I like Gondo. He's a talented, talent, talented individual. And if you guys didn't already see this as well, just to call this out on the plate too, the gaskets kind of slide into the, the plate here. There's no adhesives, I believe. They kind of just lock into place. But we'll see that as we push in things. I mean, I know I'm, I'm kind of chatting everyone's ears off here. Friction fit. How's February treating you? Pretty good so far, I'd say. <clears throat> I really regret buying my Canon 80D. Alex, you suggest it to sell it, but I don't know if I, uh, a DSLR like that will sell. Yeah, you might be surprised. I mean, at the end of the day too, like, when did you buy that, uh, the 80D? He, here's the thing. Canon still has great colors. Like ca Canon's color science has always been, people always simp over it. I think the ADD is still a good camera. I, ha I know because I, I slightly used one for a little bit, barely. Um, what you could do is you could rent the lens. Hear me out. Rent the lens, get a nice lens, rent it for the weekend, rent it for the week. See if that changes your mind about it. But if it's just like a size thing, cause DSLRs are kind of, you know, chunky, then yeah, you might not like it. I already have plans to get an older Leica this year. Which one, Dean? Are you getting a film Leica? Or are you gonna get a uh, like a, a Q series, M series? But lenses can change your your perception of a camera as well. Now, obviously, there are some things like you know maybe the way it shoots, maybe just you don't like it because it has like a shift of green or magenta or something. But Canon T3i. Oh, I remember that camera. That was a good camera. Alex, I choose my stab for my end game reflection. Should I go TXAP? Oh, you want me to choose it or you're choosing it? I mean, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick a, I'm gonna pick Cherry Clippin, my friend. <laughs> Sir, I am picking Cherry Clippin. Lens upgrade is a huge difference in terms of image quality. Yeah, and you'd be surprised what you can get out of that. It is, a, oh yeah, it is, it is a bigger camera. I don't know Canon's current mirrorless scene. I kind of been out of the Canon loop for a while, but selling all my boards for a Q3. Uh, a Q and M240. Ooh, the M240 is nice. I think you'd have a lot of fun with a Q. Everyone who I know who's bought a Leica Q, whether it's a Q1, Q2, well, mostly Q2s and Q3s, they end up, <laughs> every person I've talked to ends up Two routes, they fall in love with the thing and then that's the only camera they use or they get tempted to go into an M series, which I don't know if an M series is right for everybody because it's you know, lacking the whole autofocus thing, but I like cherry clippings for a bunch of reasons. Uh, price wise, fantastic. They are, they're clippings. They work with a whole bunch of things. And then the other thing is I, I, they're just, I know how to tune them properly. 
and I get a good sound profile out of them and they have a slight bit of scratch, is, that's what I like. So for me, I can't go wrong. Oh, that pin is bent. I can't go wrong with using clip-ins when I know that they're, I think I've maybe had one batch of clip-ins that are, are bad. Or she mainly film. That's true, Dane. So you probably would like a, an M series. Uh, for a DSLR, is a bit overkill for me. I kind of lost myself seven hundred dollars in such a huge camera. Most five hundred dollar mirrorless cameras with a nice lens would have been perfect. I I'll say this time and time again, and not to you know rub salt into the, the wound. I personally think if you're new to cameras, just get yourself a little tiny mirrorless one and invest in a nice lens. It's never worth it to get into a, a good body unless you absolutely know what you need to buy. Uh, I'm using a Mac Studio. I also feel like Canon 80D, oh, I read that one there. So I, I, I don't know, I've always felt that way, but everyone's a little different with how they want their cameras, right? Thanks, Nev, appreciate you. What kind of body are you talking about? Eh? AO testy? Dude, I heard some crazy good things about the new Nikon stuff, but um, I don't know, man. I'm I'm good with the camera systems that I have now, and I'm done with it. Like I don't think I'm. The only thing I may dabble with in the future is some specialty lenses, and that's it. There's nothing right now that could. Well, if I if I had the money, there's probably one system I'd love to try. I mean, I could technically rent it, but I'd like to try uh, the Hasselblad system. But uh, I always, I don't know, I don't really, don't really know if it's gonna do much different for what I shoot, you know, like, I don't think it's gonna do much. If I can find a Leica T or TL2 cheap, I'm gonna snag it, it's funky. Yeah, just have fun at the end of the day, guys. And uh, you know, I know we're talking about cameras, keyboards, fries, chips, just have fun, guys. Have fun and at the end of the day, just spend responsibly. Be financially responsible. Don't be dumb with your money. And that's all. Thanks, Insty. All right. And now the separate plate over here. Honestly, need to sell off some of my mouse collection. I'm at 45. I mean, if you absolutely need the money, Nev, then sure. What the? You know what's crazy about that, Insty? I know a few people that probably have triple the collection of Nev. Mice collectors, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of like special edition colors and stuff that come out with that. So some people get kind of, not lost in the sauce per se, but like some people, I mean, maybe that's exactly what I need to say. Okay, Bob. Oh yeah, I saw you were having ISP issues. Bro, I've been there. There was like a whole month. Okay, Bob. I hope you got it sorted, by the way, where I could not stream because, dude, I could not stay live for more than 15 minutes before my internet just died. So, I get you. They've got any final mouse skins? Skins? They made skins for the final mice? Uh, what's the GB for Albatross? Actually, you know what? I read it and I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, you know what, Icky Guy's here. Icky Guy, what is it? February 10th, there you go, in three days. I was gonna say the 12th for some weird reason. All right, I think we got everything put in nicely here. Again, we're doing the hot swap unit today, so no need for any, uh... why is there a part of the plastic bag over here? This is the thing about, this is not a reflection by the way on Ikea. This is just kale sockets. Kale sockets, dude. I don't know when they started doing this change. I hate this change. They put these like, shields above where the solder is. I don't know why, but they're sharp and they tug on everything. So sometimes they tug on like a piece of cloth or in this case, the, the plastic bag it was in. But yeah, they're, they're kind of annoying. I kind of don't like the 
new way they designed the shields on the, the kale sockets. Really don't understand why they did that. Yeah, I mean, Insti, if I look back in some of my older sockets, see this? Here, let me zoom in. See this piece of metal right here? This this piece of metal? That was never there. At least I don't recall. I, I think it was originally just like, yeah, the U. Um, and they, they get snagged on everything. And I really don't understand why Kale decided to go that, that route. Like, I don't even understand the purpose. Like, why do I need the extra piece of metal there? Is it to protect something? I've never understood. Enhance? Enhance, slow quarry. I mean, I haven't had any issues between any of the hot swap sockets. There's not one brand of hot swap socket that I think is like better than the next. Um, so I, I couldn't give you guys like a good recommendation on which one's better. All right, let's put this to the side and let's unscrew our case today. Uh, this is a single mount type of case. Actually, where's our feet? Toby. Maybe it was manufacturing optimization to drop it. Oh, maybe, maybe. Honestly, it's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Maybe it's some sort of optimization there. Check your left control and left alt. Left control and left alt. What's wrong with them? They're in the right spots, no? Did I do something wrong? Oh, it looked like they were not fully in. No, they're in. They're clipped in. I have an orange gasket on this because I ran out of black gaskets. If that's maybe what you're seeing and you're like, what is that? Sorry, I ran out of black gaskets for these. So, my bad. I don't even know where I got those orange gaskets from. Oh, there's an LED here, which I'm not gonna solder in. Are these? Do I have to peel this off? I do. My bad. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. I thought maybe I put them in the wrong spot, which I've done in the past. If this was O-ring, I'd be all over it. You know, I will say this. There's been like one good O-ring TKL. I think typically when I go TKLs, the O-rings don't really sound that great. I guess it depends on how you do it. I like the cause and I think that's really it. You know, actually, I will agree with you, Nev. Uh, I think the packaging is fun. Um, maybe for someone who doesn't already have one, I do think going with a hard shell carrying case is definitely nicer. Uh, but I think maybe if the target audience is people who don't, or who already have a few keyboards, it becomes a little bit like a, I, I don't need any more hard shell cases. Like I, I definitely don't want any more. I think even having one or two is fine. Uh, but I, I agree with you. I think that usually, usually a hard shell case is what I would lean to in terms of packaging. But it's not be all and end all for me and maybe that's just my own experience and like bias here. Oh wait, no, let's not peel this off yet. Let's wait for that. Let's get my screwdriver kit. Do you store them in the carrying cases? Yeah, I usually just find a place on my shelf for them. Uh, actually, let me see one thing here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. GB was a nightmare for which one? Freebird TKL. Yeah, that was a really long question, Icky guy. Are the screws changing at all? Because I don't know if I saw anything about the screws. Uh, no, we're taking a look at, yes, they are changing. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I didn't want to like come out guns blazing, but these are, yeah, these are Phillips. And I was like, eh. Have ever done a showcase of my entire collection? Not really. I, mean, I know a lot of people think my collection is something to like behold but it's mostly just prototype stuff. Like it's, I also have to enter most things, like not everything. Sometimes I, I, I get blessed by like uh, someone you know, who's running a group by and 
they'll send they'll like give me the opportunity to do friends and family or maybe they'll let me keep something but majority of everything i have is mostly prototypes the ones that i do have like the moon tower some of my other boards like the things i've purchased they're the ones that i get lucky with or i'll win a raffle or something but i know tons of people in this hobby who have more uh rare things than i do i think i just probably have more things that like <laughs> half don't work because they're prototypes or maybe that's what i have but uh, this moon tower was, yeah, I think this was the raffle. One of the two moon towers was a raffle. The other one was, uh, the other one was friends and family. I think this was the friends and family one. Oh no, the purple one was, but I gave away the purple one. This is the V2. No, no, sorry. You're, I am wrong. It's the other way around. Uh, what is the board you keep returning to again and again? I think my my board that I constantly will swap back to is something we built within the last year, which is probably the, the Envoy, believe it or not. The Envoy is something I keep coming back to. Envoy, Kohaku, and Kaze are probably something that I would say are staples in my rotation. I like the Envoy. I just think it's nice, you know. You're the GOAT and I appreciate you. Just had to get this out there. Maxi Hawk, love you, dude. This has some weight to it, by the way. This is a heavy bottom piece. So here's the purple again, if you guys want to see an up close of that anodization. It's very good. No visible machine marks on the inside, which I appreciate. Well, obviously on the corner, there's like a small machine mark on the, if you guys wanted to get super technical about things. You can kind of see it. I don't know if that step there is actually machine mark or just on design, but or part of the design. But no anno hooks, which is nice too, on the bottom. Very awesome. And then on the top, no anno hooks. I love that. Very good anno. Very, very nice. 349. Hey Alex, was looking at keycaps and novel keys labeled with B stock. Can you link me? I didn't know we have B stock keycaps. Uh, I'd have to ask Mike about those. I, I don't know why I'm not familiar with those. B-stock keycaps? Yeah, I'll ask Mike. Link, link me and I'll, I'll quickly... Do we have Milky... Oh, it's the Milky Way ones? I didn't even know we had B-stock. Uh... Let me quickly DM Mike. Hold on. MG. I don't know. I just I just sent him a message. I have no idea what the B stock is. I'm assuming maybe there's yeah like I am Link said some sort of aesthetic damage or. Maybe there's like a problem with a certain keycap in there or something, but yeah, there's not much info on the website about that, huh? Maybe I can ask uh, them to add some stuff there. Mike's responding. I'll let you guys know. I shall let you guys know. Slight imperfection on the set. You can see it in the pictures. Oh, Mike. Mike said I can see it. I think I'm blind. I think we've proved that today. I'll have to double, I have to like zoom in later. Perhaps it's the legends. Who ran um, heresy or her heresy, heresy, what is it pronounced? Who ran that? Oh, let me put the gaskets on. Toby, leave me alone. 
Oh, there's a photo for it. Never mind. I didn't even realize that picture was there. Oh, so this is a, oh, this is actually a problem with some Milky Way stuff. That makes sense. Riley said a lot of it can be wiped off. Um, he said it's mostly just dirt. A lot of it just needs cleaning. That's kind of a, Milky Way's like that though, man. The texture of their caps, like, if you guys recall Monike, um, Monike had something very similar where if like you put your nail to the cap, it left a mark. Um, and I think this is, I remember, oh, I know for a fact cause I've used MW sets before and I have a few that I think are awful feeling. Um, yeah, they can leave that mark with certain colors as well and certain finishes of their keycaps. I don't know why they, why they did it like that. Monike ended up redoing all their sets though, which is cool. I, uh, I ended up not really caring too much about Milky Way sets. There was a few that I didn't mind, but their quality was like gambling. So I ended up not caring too, too much about them. Yeah, Riley said most of it is not actually scuffs. Majority of it is just streaks and dirts that just would need to be wiped off. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, where'd you get my desk pads from? This one here is from uh, Keeb Matt, but there are a lot of vendors now carrying these small desk pads. So it kind of depends on what style you're looking for. Actually, even Novel Keys has them now too. Uh, what do I do for the, oh, this one here, bottom. I like this gasket system, kind of cool. Just press fit. I wonder how, if they're gonna like fall off if I flip this over though. Kind of fun. Some of them feel a bit loose. A close up of the gaskets? Yeah, give me one moment. Let's take a look. Oh, camera shaking. <clears throat> so they kind of just press fit in. Actually, no, they hold. That's kind of cool. Don't think I've ever seen it implemented like this before. Uh, I don't see why this board couldn't be O-ring. Well, you would need to, yeah, you would need to have some sort of standoffs for the O-ring. So I don't, I don't know if O-ring would work here. Is that palm, oh shit. Is that palm plate? Yes, it is. We're using palm today. Everyone voted palm. Now, if Nixies don't sound good on palm, which I think they still will, we'll swap a few of the switches for HMX and we'll go from there. Oh, one of the gaskets fell out. I am seeing you kind of have to push to get them to click in though. So I was being very gentle at first. I didn't want to damage anything. No, why are there so many fucking bots? You guys who run these bot accounts are fucking losers, bro. Actual factual dude. Let's ban you. Thank you, thank you, Insty. Actual factual losers. Uh, I'll turn on the, Alex just called me a bot. No, I it's the people running, you know what I'm saying? I'll turn it off in a second, the shield mode. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I don't even know, like, are they linking stuff? Is that what it is? Or are they just like, who is going there and buying that? Like, that's crazy. Twitch TV, <laughs> thanks, Kenny. The, the gaskets do feel a little finicky, icky guy. I think the tolerance on the bottom side of the gasket, if it wants to focus, 
or not. I think that the tolerance needs to be a little thicker so it can like really, I guess, push in. But uh, other than that, I kind of like the idea of it. It's fun. It's, a, it's just another play on like the sleeves, kind of. But I have to be a little delicate as we put this in. I can feel some of them click in and some of them don't. I don't know if it's just the palm plate as well. Do the nav cluster. <laughs> oh, on the bottom plate. On the plate first. Yeah. Actually, I could just do that. And I can let it sit there. Let me do that first. Uh, if you're a bot, you're a beautiful bot. I feel like bots are, they're coming back full force again. They were like a thing a few years ago where every single time I'd stream, it'd be bots. But I feel like they're, they're just coming back full force now. All right, let's put this in. Alex, it's my birthday. Oh, did some gaskets fall out? Yeah. Yeah, tolerance definitely needs to be touched up a little bit on them. Just a slight bit, icky guy. But I like the idea of it. Uh, Alex, my birthday's coming up and all I want is you, Toby. What the, what on earth, Toby? All right, let's put the other two on top here. We actually reduced it at, oh, did you? Could also be the palm plate. The palm plate's a little flimsy, you know? So that could also be messing with the tolerances. I'm sure the, actually let's see. Will the aluminum plate sit nicer with these? Oh dude, the aluminum plate, like, yeah, it's probably the palm plate then. The plastic plate probably causes it to, cause look, all right. Seems seems to be just the palm plate then. So never mind. Maybe it's just the palm being a little bit, you know, bendy that way. How do you feel about split plates? Uh, like what we have today? So the interesting thing about this is I find, oh, oh, maybe, oh I don't know. I'll double check if my girlfriend's okay here in a second. I find that uh, these split plates, they have nicer backspaces because there's not this like sheet, there's like a sheet of metal usually here. And I, I always find this kind of area sounds pretty bad on TKLs, on some TKLs, usually gasket mounted ones. Um, so it's nice to have split because it kind of allows you to have this as a separate plate, this is a separate plate and you kind of get that resonance that breaks off here in the center. Um, so it's usually kind of nice. All right, let's screw this guy in. Ooh, this thing got weight. What about split PCBs? Oh, GST. I got excited, icky guy. I did get excited. XD, a little XD. Put this down here. Why not immediately? Because she's probably playing Valorant. She probably died and slammed her mouse in Valorant. I I, I know what the, what that mouse slam is. It's playing one of the worst games, you know? Real? <laughs> She died in Valorant, shake my head. Dude, she's, um, I don't know what rank she is now, but she was a uh, pretty high rank. Valorant fucking sucks. Angel, me and you are on the same page. I can't play that game anymore, man. I play that game and I, I literally become a different person. But uh, I will admit though, I will admit, 
I don't mind playing Deathmatch on, on Val. That's the only thing I don't mind playing. For some reason, I pop off in Deathmatch. So I'll play it for that. But uh, I I can't... I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way about Counter-Strike a little bit too. So... No stress. Yeah, like I, I'm not stressed in Deathmatch. I can have fun. Bro, I cannot play Overwatch. I actually would rather play Val than Overwatch. Every time I play Overwatch, I just... It's just like such a boring experience for me. I don't know why. I just don't like it. Apex be stale? Yeah, I haven't touched Apex in a while. I think me and Angel were beating her head against fucking Apex for a while. And me and Angel were just like, dude, me and Angel, we'd play, right? We'd get paired with the most... I don't even know a good word to say here and be nice to the same... we get paired with the worst people ever. Like... There was a time me and Angel were just having fun. We were winning. We, I don't even know why the guy got mad at me and Angel for. Um, and he started yelling at Angel because Angel was sniping. And the guy went in by himself and got himself killed. But we still downed the team. But yelled at Angel. It was like the, the most crazy... Like, I don't know, man. I, we had to stop. Ever tried League? Yes. And... Promptly, promptly stop. I play, I play TFT all the time though. That's uh, League of Legends saving grace. Angel did say some toxic stuff afterwards. I think Angel tilted. But I mean like, not gonna lie, that's what Val does to me. Valorant makes me tilt. Same with League. Why is there a piece of plastic here? All right, let me peel this thing off now. Excellent PVD. No rippling. This is very, very good quality. Like, mirror-like quality. Very good. Um, again, not, not to beat a dead horse, but sometimes we, we see PVD here that's kind of like, eh. This is very good PVD. Here, just to show you guys, no rippling at all. It is clean. Give us a wink. PVD. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to really see me in this. Yeah, I don't think it really works here. And we haven't even put keycaps on yet. There will be a logo on the, P the PVD area here, though. Remember that, guys. It's a process to get it shiny, basically. Put a fat thumbprint on it right in the middle, please, bro. <laughs> Angel, man. Try and scratch it to see how durable it is. Please, I'll I'll tilt some people for doing that, Angel. I I will probably tilt people for that. Wait, what keycap set am I putting on it? Did we figure that out yet? I'm on my knees. Needs a nice thumbprint. Oh my God, Angel, relax. <laughs> What's uh? Who's doing the sale? Icky guy. Actually, Icky Guy, do you guys have uh, international vendors? I don't think I saw it on the list either. Was there international vendors for this? I don't think it's here. If there was, I'm not sure. No international ones? We're doing all the shipping? Sounds good. Have you guys don't know, Icky Guy also did this thing, which I fucking love. And they've done some, um, some other projects in the past too that have already been sent out. It's my SD card holder. Love this thing. Uh, Miklon? Oh, you know what? I think I do want to go with um, Shoshin or Dracula. I think those are my two choices. Let's uh, let's put a vote. I don't have Chaos Theory, unfortunately. Yeah, Shoshin or Dracula. Let's do it. Let's do a vote for those two. Let's, maybe I'll type them correctly this time. Keycaps, Shoshin, and we'll just do Dracula. We'll do a quick one-minute poll. I'm down for either. I think either would slap on this. I'm really feeling the color of this board. You know, purple always gets really good, like, really good feedback on this channel, so. 
Aikigai, I've been saying Ikigai, so if it's the other way, I'm, I'm very wrong. Dracula, oh, Dracula's winning. Let me go pre-get Dracula then. It's like a landslide. Serico would look good on this. I've tried yellow and purple, it looks good. I have the F keys on another keyboard, so I gotta take it off. <clears throat> Dracula's a good set. Are we currently in the TKL season? Dude, I was thinking about today, man. I All I've been seeing is TKLs. Everywhere lately has just been one TKL after another, for sure. I, I feel you there. Well, I hope it sounds good. There was a little sound demo on the website that they already had from another build. I did uh, spoil myself and uh, listen to it. I think it was using JWK switches, if I recall. And I think this keyword's already been streamed by people. It seems like it has a pleasant sound signature, but we'll see with this combination of things. Perhaps it'll be different this time around. <clears throat> it's always 65s? Well, I am glad to see some variation if it's always 65s. I, I, I'm i still waiting of the year of the, six, the 60%s, but I feel like we get scattered 60% and they're always so nice. And I still appreciate the 60s that come in though. Purple is a nice color. I think Dracula's gonna look nice on this. I think so. I think this will be nice with Dracula. I vibe with HK, HHKB, it's okay. You know what, I have those days too, where the, the mouse and keyboard just ain't working, bro. I get you. Alex, I still think about all the purple KBD uh, bleh, you, made, you built a while ago. Oh yeah, dude, there was so many of those. Cherry switch not good here in the center. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I'm not liking this cherry switch. It feels like a weird sluggish return. Maybe the spring was not good. Uh, where did I put my bag? Sometimes that does happen though, I guess. Any uh, predictions? Why can't I find a nice looking desk pad? You know who has really nice looking desk pads? Protozoa. Actually, okay, I know I work for Novel Keys, so take this with a grain of salt. Anything I ever say about Novel Keys, take with a grain of salt, because I, I technically work for them. I will admit, Novel Keys has some of those uh, art series ones that I think look pretty nice. And my favorite desk pad from Novel Keys lately is that Spellbook one. However, it is a different material than I think most people would like. Um, it's the, oh God, what material is it? It's like a velvet or not a velvet. I don't remember what it's called. Suede, it's like a suede material. Um, I don't know if many people like suede though, but I think that one there's beautiful. Also some other good desk pads. Uh, Helheim Designs. Angel is an artist. He's in chat, I think, somewhere. 
Angel's really good at doing artwork. No, oh, this U does not go here. Does it go here? No, it goes above. I'm not here. Angel's a very talented artist. I think a lot of people here would probably like his art. Uh, not saying it because he's my friend, but genuinely. I'm using a Heckheim desk pad. Yeah, Heckheim is pretty good. Problem is I have a very specific taste. What, 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 what does that look like? What does your specific taste look like? All right, so stuff we know about this board so far, it's gonna be 350, 20 mil front height, um, some different plate options, Gondo PCB, uh, pretty simplistic design everywhere with some theme around being like a, an albatross, so the wings on it. Uh, a little, little uh, I guess front badge you can say, but it's really, I would say this is very, very subtle. It's not in your face. It does have um, on a, an aesthetic note, by the way, guys, even bezels. I know some people like thin side bezels. If you're like me, I prefer thin and then, you know, chunky on the top and bottom. So. Bro. <laughs> you guys know I would have found that out, you know that? And then it does, it does have a split plate system too. And then also it does feature a sort of unique gasketing system. Is this Dragula? Did I fuck up another thing? Oh, I thought I put the I in the, or the, the G in the wrong place or something. I want something winter inspired with a full pad design. Oh, you knew who has something like that? Um, oh God, Kinetic Labs. They have something like that. Check the end. Did I fuck up more stuff? Let's see. Uh, oh yes, yes. You know, you told me about this, Icky guy. Uh, they're also doing a first week promo. Uh, I think day one and two, they're giving away free desk pads and artisans if you buy the keyboard, right? Rest of the week is either one. So the first two days you get an artisan keycap and a desk pad too. By the way, again, this is a sponsored build. I know we mentioned it at the beginning. Um, I am not keeping the keyboard though, if you guys are wondering. But I did do the switches myself because I, I did genuinely want to see with this TKL. Because I like the way, like, I like classic TKLs. They get me going. But I wanted to see what this sounds like with Cherry Nixies. Uh, in two days. Wait, no. What day is it today? The 8th? No, the 7th. So three days. Now let's check uh, shipping and hope it doesn't fuck me. Uh, yes, I should mention that because... I always get shipped for this on YouTube. Um, there will be a shipping cost and taxes. I, I don't, I feel like I shouldn't have to mention this because I feel like not everyone's run like Amazon, but it is, there is a shipping cost. And I, I couldn't tell you what that is because it's gonna vary depending on where you live in the world, as well as taxes. No, dude, I, I I have people every single time I do a review or something, they always get mad at me for it. And what's crazy is I've never had another, I've never seen another reviewer mention, mention shipping and taxes before in, in many of the other like tech reviews that I've seen. Before. It's just crazy to me. How the fuck, bro, do I know, Angel? My bad, guys. I mean, desk pads are quite chunky though. That's one thing people don't realize too, is desk pads, they kind of cost a lot to ship. There's no way around that, unfortunately. They're just, they're heavy and unfortunately, they take up a lot of space, so. Um, everyone gathered to pick that up for free? I don't know if I'm down for that, I'll be honest. That seems like a, a lot of work. I'm gonna say pass. You didn't know shipping to me, plus the duties? Shake my head. Yeah, my bad. But you know what, I'll learn for next time. I picked up some desk pads uh, at TwitchCon last year to save myself shipping. Yeah, they can get pricey, man. Also, Schwinn, I hope you're doing well. And thank you guys for all tuning in today again. I, I really appreciate that for all the follows and subs. And thank you guys. I really, it really means a lot that you guys still stop by here, you know? Uh, the right profile it is 
I'm on a job hunt. Oh yeah, Schwinn, what happened? I don't know if you want to talk about it. You don't have to. They wrecked my team. <laughs> Did they actually? Was there a lot of layoffs? Again, you don't have to talk about it. Probably TMI, but. They let off uh, five and seven, uh, wait, five, seven to, wait, five slash seven and my manager and his manager. Oh shit. So, yeah, there was a lot of layoffs then. Well, man, I, I wish you the best of luck, my friend. I hope. I hope you find something relatively quick and um, yeah, I, don't, I think the job market's like in a weird spot right now, but you know what? I think you, I think you'd be able to, if you just I put a B here for me, why'd I, why'd I put this here? I, I think you'll be able to find something, dude. I have confidence. I had 35% layoff and my division was like 70. Shit. Yeah, dude. You know what? I'm going to... Guys, let's uh let's give let's give Schwinn a hug or something, bro. Layoffs are not fun. I got laid off two, three years ago as well from my last job. Not fun, not fun to deal with. Makes you feel poopy sometimes. But we love you, man. You'll bounce back though, bro. You're strong. Missing one keycap here, guys. Uh I ordered a second inkwell desk pad. The inkwell desk pads are really nice. Gotta admit. Now does Dracula have F13? I always forget if it does. I don't think it does though. That's the wrong end. Zero comes before one, thanks. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, dude. Um, is this right end? No, it's the wrong profile. Does Dracula come with F13? There's F13 on Drac? Where the fuck is it? Maybe I don't have the F13 key. I don't have F13. Not the first round? Oh. Then that's probably why. I'll just put delete. Ah, oh, whatever. I'll just put delete here, I guess. Oh well. I'm surprised more sets didn't come with that 13. Even back in when this ran. This looks nice though. Good choice in Dracula. I like this. This does look good. Oh, is Palm is Palm a sick choice with Nixies? So the gaskets are relatively thin here. Let's um, let's talk about the, the mounting system for a quick second. They are relatively thin. Uh, I feel like this is gonna sound a little bit more like a top mount because they're thin and they're also a little bit more dense. Uh, they're not quite spongy like Poron. They feel like some sort of silicone or some sort of denser plastic. Um, so let's see what this sounds like. We are using palm plate. Um, this is GMK Dracula with Nixies, no foam. And let's see what this sounds like. HJ test, pretty nice. Okay, I like this. That is a great space bar. Hold on. 
slight resonance on the up arrow. I know some people are very particular about their up arrows. But everything sounds really good on this. No, I don't think this is weird. I need to lube it a little bit more. I did only tune the space bar. This is, a, I mean, the alphas are really good too. Spacebar 100% stealing the shell, man. Pretty nice. I, again, I think this fits in, if you're into this aesthetic as well, with a little bit of a chunkier bezel. Um, they did a great job on this. It is very soft too. I think the, the gasket mount, lends to a softness. I know Ikigai said they worked with Gondo on designing the plate too. So it's a Gondo PCB and I guess a Gondo designed, inspired whatever plate too, so. There's, there's, Go dude, whenever I do a Gondo project of any sort, Gondo's here. <laughs> Gondo. I'm honored to say that the plate design aimed for uniformity of sound. I think you did a great job, dude. I love that everyone likes it. I designed it with a key guy and we feel the plate design is pretty good. I think you guys did super, super solid design on this. I was a little hesitant about pairing Nixies with Palm with gasket. Uh, again, more of a silicone gasket though. So not really like a very, you know, soft gasket, but side profile. Yeah, I really like this. This is great. Um, side profile, again, I think it's a uh, very classic. You're not gonna get anything crazy. There is actually some, oh, come on, Alex, what's going on here? I feel like the anno on this particular unit is a little different though. I didn't notice that on the other side, just so we can see that here. Anno match is not 100% icky guy, perhaps uh, to look at that a little bit more, but I know this is a pro, what the fuck is going on? Camera? Oh, what the, how did the, hold on guys. Taking notes. This is, I'd say quite different. Did the other side have the same thing? No, the, the focus. No, this side looked good. What the? <laughs> uh, I looked at this side originally. Is the anno a little off on this side? Or is it just the, uh, like my camera or I guess the, the light? What the? Um. Are you guys seeing this too? Is it my lighting? I don't, I don't know. It shouldn't happen though. Cause you can see there's like a bit of a difference here. Shading perhaps, I don't know. Either way, just to know, it does look like there is some difference on this side. I mean, I can see it with my eyes too. And then this side, it seems like to my eyes, there's a little bit of difference over here, but not much. It is a little bit weird. Again, I know this is a proto unit. I was even warned there might be some like scratches or anything on this too, but just so you guys are aware, that's what I see. Um, truthfully, it doesn't really take me out of this though. Seems to be just on that one side, but just a note for Icky guy. We got it. That's awesome. Love to hear that dude. A little minor, yeah, it's a minor, minor, minor thing here. Could also again, just be from pairing prototype stuff. So uh, first time I'm seeing this purple though. Yeah, it is a gorgeous purple. I really like the sound of this. I think of everything we've done recently, this might be one of my favorites out of all the stuff we've done. Yeah. USB port is recessed. It is quite recessed though, uh, but not like an extreme amount. Ignore the little lines here. Um, I, again, another note for Icky Guy. It does seem like the box that it came in has like a foam that's stacked and glued. And it seems like some of the glue got onto the the case, so it's not a scratch or anything. It's just glue. Very, it's a very nice space bar. We used Palm, so I'm I'm very happy with this. This turned out great, dude. Um, I hope the team at Icky Guy uh, can take some pride in the project as well, as with you, Gondo. But to yell at some suppliers, yeah, it seemed like the glue kind of poured out. <laughs> I don't know. How's the PCB? Gondo, I never have problems with your PCBs. I always like your PCBs, Gondo. You do a great job all the time, my friend. What are the final color offerings? I think there's a red, a black, 
and a purple, if I recall. But let me double check. My God, please, screwdriver, please. Red, purple, gunmetal, gray, orange. Icky guy, do you have, do you have a picture of the orange? I didn't know. I didn't read orange. Do you have a photo of that that I can see possibly? I just came back from a haircut. Can you do a typing test again? It's very nice. Test without desk pad? Sure. Is there anyone here who doesn't use a desk pad? Should I be doing no desk pad tests more often? Relatively the same with a bit more bass. Uh, hold on, I wanna see this Pantone, because if this orange is nice, I want that orange. I love orange, orange is such a nice color. Oh, that's gonna be such a sick orange. Wait a sec, I missed the C at the end. Does that change the color at all? No, it's still beautiful. Yeah, I like that orange. Show, here, 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 I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, how do I show my eye uh, screen again? Here, here is the orange. That is such a nice orange, dude. Like, that is so solid. Is that the right color code? I, am I doing this right? Yeah, yeah, F6, uh, FF6, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hex is right and the Pantone chip is right. That's nice. All right, I think, I think I'm sold in the orange alone. But no, it's, an, it's a nice design. I will admit, again, from my personal preferences and I, I, I personally prefer thinner bezels on the side, but it's that's a very preference and that's my own bias there. So keep that in mind too. So the gunmetal will look like this, Icky guy said. This is the gunmetal. It's a very dark gunmetal. It is nice though. This is my favorite product from them, by the way. Um, I love the chonk. Yeah, I mean, some people like different things. Everyone, everyone's different. On a curious note, this is the first time I hear a good typing test of this keyboard. I'm beyond happy. Wait, this is the first time I hear a good typing test of this keyboard. I'm beyond happy this sounds good. Really? Have other tests been not good? Like, oh, also the PBDing. I, I know we mentioned this. The PBDing is excellent. Absolutely excellent on this as well. <clears throat> Sorry for all the fingerprints in the back, too. This weighs a lot. Um, do you guys want me to get the scale? Uh, with a good mic and all, we did the typing sticky guy, but he doesn't have the good mic and setup. Oh, yeah. I know the, the test that I saw on the website had a lot of thudding. I think the mic is attached to the desk and that's what usually happens. Oh, a proper typing test. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, th that other typing test was a lot of thudding noises and it was kind of distracting. Uh, let me get a, let me get the scale. I, I think I, I don't even know where I put my scale. Here, let me go try to find it really quick and then I'll tell you guys the weight of this keyboard. Looks great though, I'm very happy with this. It's turned out fantastic. One moment. I forgot, I put it to the side because my scale needs batteries and I don't have the right batteries for it. it. Takes some weird, you know, the circular batteries, I just don't have it. Sorry guys, it's dead. The lighting in the back always trips me out. You mean my lights, uh, the, the fake windows? <laughs> it's really bright at 9 p.m. Also, Icky guy, is there, 
a non pvd version of this? I can't remember if you said there was going to be or not. I, I hope there's not. Okay, well, okay, I, I say that with selfishness in mind here. Was there going to be like just a standard brass clear coat or just some sort of like... Oh, it's like two and a half. I mean, yeah, about 2.25 2 kilos. Okay. Yeah, I use those coin cell batteries. And I have some that I used for my... Um, what's it called? <laughs> I put my keys with an air tag so I don't lose them. Um, but yeah, I, I still... It's the wrong one, so... The base kit is stainless steel mirror finish. Okay. Actually, I think I'd prefer a silver finish at the very least over black finish. With the orange in particular, although I do think the, the black and purple looks really, really nice. Glossy black is bay. Um, no, this is going to go to YouTube probably. I like the board quest. It sounds like, look at this space bar. That space bar is insane. Sounds and looks fantastic. Yeah, I, I really like this. Turned out great. I know I keep saying that, but it, it legitimately like, this is my sound profile. I love this. Um, and sometimes we use Nixies and we can't get like this. So again, it depends on the keyboard, depends on a lot of factors. Uh, it's not just like we used a switch and this is all keyboard sound. Um, I try to aim for this sound profile on keyboards that I really like, and this is hitting it for me. Uh, we're using Palm for this. I was about to say PP, but there's no PP plate. Palm plate. Um, the best way to remove loop from switches? Mm, that's, I mean, that's a really tough question. I would say just open it up. <sighs> Depends on where the lube is though. Like if it's in the center well of the bottom housing, then you might have to use some sort of like solution just to dissolve the lube or ultrasonic cleaner. Um, truth be told, it may be cheaper for you just to, like if they're in like areas where you can't just remove it with a brush or wipe it away, uh, it might just be cheaper to buy new switches. I know that sounds wasteful. Uh, or get an ultrasonic cleaner. Or you could just try soap and water. Just a very light soap and water rinse on the stem and maybe the top housing. Uh, don't do it to the bottom housing though. Or just try to wipe it away with the brush. That's all too. <sighs> In milk cereal? What? In milk like cereal? What the? All right, guys. That's pretty much it. You ever just mangle a switch? Oh, dude, I have mangled so many switches trying to pull it out of the plate. One time I forgot my keyboard was soldered in and I was trying to pull it. I was like, yeah, this is fucking hot swap. Sat there for like five minutes yoinking out switches and damaging the fuck out of them. And I'm like, oh, this is not hot swap. Um, hope you guys had a good time on stream today. Um, I hope everyone's had a great day. I will be live again tomorrow. We're doing a Kibu keyboard tomorrow. I know everyone... Everyone usually likes Kibu keyboards, so it should be a fun, fun stream. But let's go see who we can go raid. I think ELH Customs is building. There's a bunch of people doing keyboards. Actually, a bunch of people. Um, let's do a read ELH today. Copy. All right. Thanks, Alex. Have a good one. I hope everyone had a good one, man. Feel free to message on Discord for further questions, guys. Yeah, if you guys want to, go message Icky guy. I'm really happy with this. It turned out great. I would like to see again just before we sign off here. Um, the Anno, better matching, but I think that's really the only critical concern I have with this. That's it. The other critical concerns like Phillips screws, were, they're just prototype stuff and they're going to be replaced. Uh, <sighs> What the, Evo, don't, don't do that. Oh my God, I'm timing out Evo, bro. Evo gets the timeout today. He's getting hit with that, bro. Timeout. There you go. All right, guys, have a good one. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye, Evo. See you guys. And good night, guys.